there's another little reflection that can occur in a function. And it occurs when you take the equation of the function. Here's one here, y equals x cubed plus 1. And there's a sketch of what the graph looks like. It occurs when you take the x and y values and you switch them. So the equation would look out now like x equals y cubed plus 1. So I've taken all the x values and made them y, and the y values and made them x, or switched x and y. And this is such a common, common operation that there's a special name attached to a function when you switch the x and y value, and it's called the inverse. Okay, so switching x and y is called the inverse of a function. And Again, we have this problem because we do not have y equals, so we're going to do a little bit of algebra here. We'll minus 1 from both sides to try to isolate y. And then we will cube root. So taking the cube root of both sides gets us now y equals the cube root of x minus 1. And it is now ready to enter in the calculator. So let's do that, and let's see what we get. And once we've graphed it, we see that the graph of the function looks something like this. You might wonder, well, what is the uh, reflection? I don't, I don't see the reflection here. It's certainly not reflected in the x-axis, and it's not reflected in the y-axis. So where is the reflection line? Well, it turns out that the reflection line... is actually the diagonal line here, that's the line y equals x, the diagonal line. So I think you can maybe see, see it here now. If you take this red graph and flip it over that green line, it would actually fall right on top of the black line. So when you take a function and you switch, switch x and y, we call that the inverse then the effect is, is the graph gets reflected about the line y equals x. Now we have a symbol for the inverse. The inverse of a function is denoted like this. f little minus 1 of x. When you see that, it means this is the inverse function of whatever function that you may have started with. Okay, so switching x and y gives us the inverse of a function. The other property of the inverse of a function is just as the x and y coordinates got switched in the function, so do the x and y coordinates get switched in the graph. So if we look at this red one, this coordinate here is the coordinate 1, 2. That's what this point would be. Point 1, 2. x is 1, y is 2. Well, look at what point you get on the inverse. This one right here, which is the point 2, 1. Right 2 and up 1. So, if you're asked to sketch the graph of an inverse, so say you're given a picture of this red one here, and you're asked to graph its inverse, just take its coordinates, take a few points in the graph, switch them around and replot them. So here's another point here. 0, 1 is the point... 1, 0 on this graph? Yes, it is, right here. X and Y got switched. Here we have a point minus 1, 0, right there. Here's the inverse of that point, 0, minus 1. So all the X, Y coordinates of this graph get switched and replotted to give our new graph here. That's the inverse, and let's summarize its properties again. When x and y are switched in a function, we call this the inverse of a function, so that the equation y equals f of x becomes x equals f of y, or y equals f of minus 1 of x, all of the x and y coordinates are switched. This means if you have the point 2, 5, the point will become 5, 2. You switch your x and y coordinates. And the graph will appear to reflect in the line y equals x.